he flipped and reared, landed on his withers, is that right? Um, and the trainer was riding him this morning and was talking about not being able to bend left very well. And if I palpate here, this, this right hip is pretty sore. As you can see, it kind of come up. Left hip isn't too bad. I'm not getting much of a reaction here, but I am over on that right side. Um, and then I go through range of motion kind of was just seeing how the spine is moving. Part of integrated body work is um, combining uh, spinal mobilization with uh, myofascial release. In my opinion, um, one of the things that uh, straight chiropractic misses is the, the fascial and the muscle involvement and the soft tissue involvement in what's causing a subluxation. This wither area is fairly sore here. Uh, you can see just in his eye and in his face what, what's going on there. He's not all that interested in having me put any pressure on it. <laughs> and this area here. Uh, yeah, and he's not usually a particularly cranky horse. And then I'll look at range of motion in the neck. This right side is actually doing pretty well. Hold on, son. <laughs> Posing for the camera. There we go. Yeah, that right side has pretty good range of motion. Left side, as I start to try and flex him, head goes up, and he's just, especially down, down in this area, he's not particularly flexible. Um, and in my opinion, that's a lot of that is fascia. So let's watch him just walk straight away from us. We're looking at the rise and fall of the hip, and then also the swing of the dock of the tail. Um, and for this horse, he's got quite a bit less, less swing than he used to have. The rise and fall is fairly relatively even, but the swing in the tail isn't, which is what's causing some of the um, right hip uh, issues. Mobilizing fascia has a, a, one of the advantages of it is that it's a way that you can get into some of the horse's motor muscles that move the horse without, um, uh, without being too invasive. If you're just doing massage, it's really difficult to get into these, into like the psoas and iliopsoas, the things that actually move the hip of the horse. I find there's two different types of um, issues that come up in horses. One is a traumatic type of issue like this where he's actually flipped over or done some damage to himself. The other one is more of a cumulative stress type of issue. The bigger reactions tend to come from the traumatic issues. Okay, just in that, he's quite a bit better. I try not to just um, treat symptoms. I try more to get to the core of what's, what's causing the problem, whether that's um, a shoeing issue, whether it's a saddle fit issue, whether it's a rider's imbalance issue. Okay, these, these ribs are pretty sore too. Anytime a horse goes over backwards, you're going to get a whole cascade of issues going on. So what I'm doing here is trying to open up and, and release some of the trigger points in the fascia around the ribs that tend to hold the hip, um, that keep the hip from moving correctly. So once we get this, this going, um, he doesn't really like this, but he's, he's doing pretty well with it. It's kind of like uh, rolfing in humans. Horses, I'm not sure, have the same concept of it feels, it hurts so good, but they tend to, um, especially by the second time I come, they tend to know that what's happening is making them feel better. So as you can see, I go down through these ribs and you can, um, when you hit one of those trigger points, it really reacts. One of the differences between a um, chiropractic approach to mobilizing a horse and an osteopathic approach is um, I'd characterize chiropractic as high velocity, um, low amplitude, which means you're not moving a joint very much, but you're doing it quickly. 
whereas an osteopathic approach is high amplitude, low velocity. So you're not doing a lot of really abrupt adjustments. Um, and you're moving the joint quite a bit more. And that's quite a bit different from oh, what you would call long lever chiropractic, which takes the leg and twists it around and then pops a hip um, or pops a neck. Those tend to be uh, th those tend to be more dangerous moves for the horse. Just in that little bit, that's quite a bit less reactive. So I'm going to leave the hip alone for a minute and start to work on the wither area where a lot of his issue is from this flipping. So as we work from the hips forward here, um, there's still quite a bit of tension and um, the restriction in this left side of the neck. Starting to get to come back down into it a little bit. But as you start to flex this horse or ask for a left lead, he's not going to be able to stay rounded or balanced on that lead with this kind of tension in here. So we're going to start to work on some of that. And in my opinion, where that comes from, when he flipped over and, and landed on his withers, that transferred down underneath that shoulder and forward in the neck. And there we go. We're right into the one of the major knots that are keeping this neck from releasing. So right now I'm working up underneath that scapula and under that shoulder blade. With horses, there's no bony connection between the front leg and the, the rest of the body. So it's all um, the equivalent of rotator cuff muscles in a human. And that when you have a, a trauma to the withers or the neck, that can really um, tighten up the shoulders. Not a lot of, not a lot of movement there. The evaluation in the bodywork session usually takes about an hour and a half. The last thing that I would do with this horse would be um, looking at an exercise program that the owner can take away and uh, continue the work that I started today. And so with this horse, um, especially with the last traumatic thing that happened in, in terms of the um, uh, hitting the withers from flipping, uh, would be getting the hip underneath him, getting the withers to come up, and getting um, a little bit of connection and engagement over the top of, over his top line. Okay, so that's about the end of a session. I think he's moving pretty well. Um, neck movement's better. <laughs> withers are less sore, hips less sore. Uh, in a couple of days, I would expect to see him moving quite a bit differently.